Amillennialism Greek, a no, plus millennialism, in Christian eschatology, involves the rejection of the belief that Jesus will have a literal, thousand-year-long, physical reign on the earth. This rejection contrasts with premillennial and some postmillennial interpretations of chapter 20 of the Book of Revelation. The amillennial view regards the thousand years mentioned in Revelation chapter 20 as a symbolic number, not as a literal description. Amillennialists hold that the millennium has already begun and is identical with the current church age. Amillennialism holds that while Christ's reign during the millennium is spiritual in nature, at the end of the church age, Christ will return in final judgment and establish a permanent reign in the new heaven and new earth. Many proponents dislike the name amillennialism because it emphasizes their differences with premillennialism rather than their beliefs about the millennium. Amillennial was actually coined in a pejorative way by those who hold premillennial views. Some proponents also prefer alternate terms such as nunc millennialism that is, now millennialism or realized millennialism, although these other names have achieved only limited acceptance and usage. Teaching Amillennialism rejects the idea of a future millennium in which Christ will reign on earth prior to the eternal state beginning, but holds that Jesus is presently reigning from heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father, that Jesus also is and will remain with the Church until the end of the world, as he promised at the Ascension, that at Pentecost, or days earlier, at the Ascension, the millennium began, citing Acts chapter 2 verses 16 to 21, where Peter quotes Joel chapter 2 verses 28 to 32 on the coming of the kingdom, to explain what is happening, and that, therefore the church and its spread of the good news is indeed Christ's kingdom and forever will be. Amillennialists also cite scripture references to the kingdom not being a physical realm. Matthew chapter 12 verse 28, where Jesus cites his driving out of demons as evidence that the kingdom of God had come upon them. Luke chapter 17 verses 20 to 21, where Jesus warns that the coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and that it is among them. Romans chapter 14 verse 17, where Paul speaks of the kingdom of God being in terms of the Christian's action. Amillennialists regard the thousand-year period as a figurative duration for Christ's reign, as in Psalms 50 to 10, where the thousand hills on which God owns the cattle are all hills, or in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 15, where the thousand generations to whom God will be faithful are all generations. Some postmillennialists and most premillennialists assert that it should be taken as a literal thousand-year period. Amillennialism also teaches that the binding of Satan, described in Revelation, has already occurred. He has been prevented from deceiving the nations by the spread of the gospel. Nonetheless, good and evil will remain mixed in strength throughout history and even in the church, according to the amillennial understanding of the parable of the wheat and tares. Amillennialism is sometimes associated with idealism, as both schools teach a symbolic interpretation of many of the prophecies of the Bible and especially of the Book of Revelation. However, many amillennialists do believe in the literal fulfillment of biblical prophecies, they simply disagree with millennialists about how or when these prophecies will be fulfilled. History Early Church. Few early Christians wrote about this aspect of eschatology during the first century of Christianity, but most of the available writings from the period reflect a millenarianist perspective sometimes referred to as Chiliasm. Bishop Papias of Hierapolis AD speaks in favor of a pre-millennial position in volume three of his five-volume work and Aristian and the Elder John echoed his sentiments, as did other first-hand disciples and secondary followers. Though most writings of the time tend to favor a millennial perspective, the amillennial position may have also been present in this early period, as suggested in the Epistle of Barnabas, and it would become the ascendant view during the next two centuries. Church fathers of the third century who rejected the millennium included Clement of Alexandria c. 150 c. 215, Origen 184 to 253-254, and Cyprian c. 200 to 258. Justin Martyr died 165, who had chiliastic tendencies in his theology, mentions differing views in his dialogue with Trifo the Jew, chapter 80. 
I and many others are of this opinion premillennialism, and believe that such will take place, as you assuredly are aware, but, on the other hand, I signified to you that many who belong to the pure and pious faith, and are true Christians, think otherwise. Certain amillennialists such as Albertus Peters understand Pseudo-Barnabas to be amillennial. In the second century, the Alogi those who rejected all of John's writings were amillennial, as was Keyes in the first quarter of the third century. With the influence of Neoplatonism and dualism, Clement of Alexandria and Origen denied premillennialism. Likewise, Dionysus of Alexandria died 264 argued that Revelation was not written by John and could not be interpreted literally. He was amillennial, Origen's idealizing tendency to consider only the spiritual as real, which was fundamental to his entire system, led him to combat the rude or crude chiliasm of a physical and sensual beyond. Premillennialism appeared in the available writings of the early church, but it was evident that both views existed side by side. The premillennial beliefs of the early church fathers, however, are quite different from the dominant form of modern-day premillennialism, namely dispensational premillennialism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medieval and Reformation periods. Amillennialism gained ground after Christianity became a legal religion. It was systematized by St. Augustine in the 4th century, and this systematization carried amillennialism over as the dominant eschatology of the medieval and reformation periods. Augustine was originally a premillennialist, but he retracted that view, claiming the doctrine was carnal. Amillennialism was the dominant view of the Protestant reformers. The Lutheran Church formally rejected chiliasm in the Augsburg Confession. Art 17 condemns the Anabaptists of Munster. Historically most Anabaptist groups were amillennial and others who now scatter Jewish opinions that, before the resurrection of the dead, the godly shall occupy the kingdom of the world, the wicked being everywhere suppressed." Likewise, the Swiss reformer, Heinrich Bullinger wrote up the Second Helvetic Confession which reads, "...we also reject the Jewish dream of a millennium, or golden age on earth, before the last judgment." John Calvin wrote in Institutes that chiliasm is a "...fiction." That is, too childish either to need or to be worth a refutation. He interpreted the thousand year period of Revelation chapter 20 non literally, applying it to the various disturbances that awaited the Church, while still toiling on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Modern times Amillennialism has been widely held in the Eastern and Oriental Orthodox churches as well as in the Roman Catholic Church, which generally embraces an Augustinian eschatology and which has deemed that premillennialism cannot safely be taught. Amillennialism is also common among Protestant denominations such as the Lutheran, Reformed, Anglican, Methodist and many Messianic Jews. It represents the historical position of the Amish, Old Order Mennonite, and Conservative Mennonites though among the more modern groups premillennialism has made inroads. It is common among groups arising from the 19th century American Restoration Movement such as the Churches of Christ, Christian Church Disciples of Christ and Christian Churches and Churches of Christ. It also has a following amongst Baptist denominations such as the Association of Grace Baptist Churches in England. Partial preterism is sometimes a component of amillennial hermeneutics. Amillennialism declined in Protestant circles with the rise of postmillennialism and the resurgence of premillennialism in the 18th and 19th centuries, but it has regained prominence in the West after World War II. Topic: See also Christian eschatology Summary of Christian eschatological differences Millenarianism References Further reading Provan, Charles D. The Church is Israel Now, Old and New Testament Scripture Texts which illustrate the conditional privileged position and titles of Racial Israel, and their transfer to the Christian Church, arranged with commentary. Vallecito, Caliph, Ross House Books, 1987. 74p, without ISBN. Topic. External links A Defense of Reformed Amillennialism
A series of articles by David J. Engelsma from the Standard Bearer, April 1, 1995 through December 15, 1996. Monergism's articles on amillennialism. Grace Online Library, Amillennialism, various articles on amillennialism. Millennium and Millenarianism, from the Catholic Encyclopedia. Blue Letter Bible Summary, Dispensational Premillennialism Perspective. On the Thousand Year Reign, Chiliasm, Elder Cleopa of Romania, Eastern Orthodox view. End Times, from Project Wittenberg, Lutheran Perspective. Millennium, by Nathan J. Engel, Lutheran Perspective. Understanding Eschatology from an Amillennial Perspective, a series of lectures by Steve Gregg. Rational Christian Eschatology, a general case for an Amillennial Perspective on the Future. <laughs>